So we're here to talk about um, securing the container supply chain with Notary. Um, I'm Justin Cormack. I'm the CTO at Docker. I've been a Notary maintainer for many years, and this is Toddy. Yeah, I'm Toddy Malinov. I'm a principal product manager at Microsoft. I am uh, actually maintainer for the last couple of months on Notary, and I work on uh, secure supply chain for containers for Microsoft and Microsoft customers. So let's start with, you know, um, you know the end-to-end -end software supply chain, what we're, you know, what we're really trying to achieve. Um, um, we've got, you know, developers, um, you know, building applications, pushing them to registries, um, and, um, it, we, we, what we're really seeing is that people are people are building up and trying to, um, um, you know, trying to uh, you know, trying to add these components to to build a secure supply chain on top of you know what started out as an ecosystem, which, which um, sadly was built without without any any security properties at all. Um, yeah. You know. So when you think about like uh, when you have piece of software, right? How do you ensure that it comes from, let's say, trusted source? And how do you ensure that uh, when it moves from one place to another place, to third place, to fourth place, actually the integrity of the software doesn't get compromised, right? Uh, that's what we are kind of thinking about the software secure uh, supply chain. And you need to ensure that actually it is trustable and not tampered with throughout the whole pipeline. Right? And this example was specifically around uh, uh, like developer, whether it's open source or inside the enterprise, producing a piece of software, signing it, for example, and making sure that actually it's signed during the build time. Uh, and then it uh, can go through the whole pipeline into the registry, get deployed to the Kubernetes cluster. And you can add the admission of the Kubernetes cluster, ensure that, for example, the the software is uh, uh, really produced by who you think it is, and it's meeting your policy requirements. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so the Notary project's really um, been driving innovation around, a, you know, a set of standards around um, around the secure supply chain, and one of the, we haven't been doing all these things like. In the notary project, necessarily, we're doing them all over the ecosystem, where you know where it's most appropriate and where the standardisation um, is best done. Um, so we did, for example, um, you know there was there was the first question like years ago was like where do we store signatures? Like uh, um, you know how can we build this into the standards around OCI? Um, what are the requirements? Um, how are we how are we going to do this? What what um, uh, and the you know the the, OC, the OCI um, you know had a bunch of limitations that were kind of made it kind of difficult. So um, one of the big initiatives we did was work with the Aorus project um, on think, around the Artifact Manifest and the Referrers API. So um, the Referrers API you know one one of the one of the customer requirements that we got strongly from customers is that they want to be able to add um, things to um, containers and container images after they've been built to add supply chain information that wasn't known at build time. Um, and you know, there's a lot of kind of showing and throwing, but it's like you've got immutable artifacts, and if you change them, they're a different artifact is the kind of model that um, we built for containers. Um, and so the referrers API was um, built as a way to say, well, I've got this immutable artifact, but I want to point to it with a referrer and add additional data to it that's a, that adds, for example, a later SBOM, a, a detached signature. Um, and then if I want, I can refer directly to the signature, which points at the artifact, or I can go to the artifact and ask the registry, like, what are the things that people have added? What's the additional data? And so we, um, we prototyped that in Aura, so we proposed it to OCI, and you know so that's part of the OCI 1.1 process. So that was that's you know that's kind of um, shipping, you know, in, a, in OCI, and you can now it, this is 
gradually being supported in more in the registry ecosystem. So there's work in distribution in order to have a reference implementation for that, so that people can, you know, uh, we're you know in process of implementing a Docker Hub, and you've implemented it. ACR, in, in so ACR. So there's there's places you can test it now. There's places where you can test out the the work and make sure that it's providing the customer value, and then. The next stage is really helping, you know, helping people build stuff on top of that, and, and working out, you know, the next stages and what the what the additional work is. Yeah, and uh, the most important part is actually using the referrer APIs and uh, uh, ensures that actually those artifacts are linked uh, using uh, kind of the uh, digests, which are kind of the SHAs, and they are not linked by, let's say, uh, the tag, as uh, for example, some other. Uh, products are trying to do because TAC is mutable, so you can very easily actually override the TAC and say, okay, now actually I'll override the TAC with different signatures, which is my personal signature, whether I'm trustable or not, separate question, right? Um, yep, so. And, uh, and I think, you know, a lot of what's come out of the process is the, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of customer requirements around what the kind of workflows people want around signing and secure supply chain are. There's still, you know, there's there's bit of materials which, you know, is becoming very important. And there's, but then there's like, in total attestations which people are really um, starting to become much more interested in adding to their images and so on. So there's a whole ecosystem of pieces around images that we're building up standards for how to support them. And still, still more work to do on on standardization and helping people use OCI most effectively. You know, to do these things. Yep. So really kind of emphasizing that, you know, Notary is based on standards. We, we're not trying to, um, you know, necessarily make the Notary project a home of standards, but as, as a place where we collaborate on, on, building, those, um, on building those standards. So um, we've taken Seabor for um, signing from IETF, for example, um, and you know, JWS and things like that. So we're, we're taking we're taking existing um, existing standards, um, um, you know, from from outside the ecosystem as well. Yeah, and uh, right now we support both like JWS and uh, COSI, which is kind of the signing and encryption format for CBOR. Uh, the one reason actually we went with CBOR is it's actually a very compact and binary format which means that uh, signatures that are uh, using COSI, they can be also uh, verified on a, a low power, power device. So if you have Raspberry Pis or even kind of smaller devices, it doesn't uh, uh, need the computing power that, for example, to parse the, parse the JSON. So you can save on energy when you use the uh, COSI format. Yeah, and uh, so uh, since last KubeCon, uh, this is kind of the progress that we made. Um, I don't know whether uh, some of you attended last KubeCon. They were actually just in, and uh, one of my colleagues did, did demos. But uh, uh, we are in RC stage right now. So we had uh, uh, our first RC was in December. Uh, we finalized the uh, signature specification there and also uh, the way that we can actually implement plugins to Notary. So you can implement your own plugins in Notary if you want to, for example, support uh, uh, key votes that uh, we do not support right now. It's very easy to go and plug it in and uh, uh, use it in Notary. Uh, one change that we had to do, I don't know how much you are aware, but there was significant kind of uh, uh, step back on the OCI side. So in February, we needed to do a change in the specification just uh, uh, to revert uh, from using the artifact uh, manifest to uh, a previous image manifest. So that's on the uh, spec side. Uh, on the uh, tool that we use for actually signing, we call it notation. So we uh, have uh, uh, almost four releases actually by end of this week or maybe next week we'll have RC4. And uh, we are waiting on the security audit to be completed in order to release actually the tool in the uh, first version, which will be kind of uh, officially supported version for that. 
uh, but there are a lot of things that happen. So we have remote signing, we have uh, uh, trust store and trust policy. So I'll demonstrate this in the demos uh, later on. Uh, you can see a bunch of features that actually uh, uh, you can use there, but it's a uh, full-fledged actually signing experience that you can use in Notary. Yep. So demo. <laughs> yeah, so it's the demo time. So I will need to switch to my actually duplicate the screens because it will be hard to for me to look with my back. Uh, so let me just uh, do that change. And we can uh, jump in the demo. So the first demo is uh, really uh, how, how the signing works. So, um, Oops, actually, no, that's the wrong demo. The demo gods are not good today, so sorry about that. I need to rerun all these things that I thought I ran right before we started, but... And it is failing. Last time. If not, I will run it from a video. So. Okay. Sorry about that. Let me go to the video recording of that so we can save the time. Okay, uh, once again, apologize for the demo gods. Uh, what we are doing here is actually, uh, I'm setting up my environment. So I have two images that I would like to uh, uh, sign. Um, one is the application image, uh, which is stored in the GitHub container registry. And the other one is the uh, test image, which is stored also in GitHub container registry. Uh, the Flask, Flask sample is the one that actually I consider my application. The net monitor is one uh, which is a test image and now sign it with uh, a test key. Uh, I have notation version uh, 100RC4, uh, which is a pre-release for RC4. RC4 will come, as I said, uh, either later today, uh, Pacific time or uh, uh, on Monday. Uh, the next thing is uh, I have a plugin that I have configured, uh, AKV plugin, that's Azure Key Vault. Uh, that's where my actually remote key is stored, so it's stored in very secure location. I don't have the remote key on my machine, so uh, I will demonstrate how we can use this remote key to do the signing. Um, there are two tags for the uh, images. They both are called KubeCon Demo V1 uh, for both the Flask sample and the um, Net Monitor image. And I think that's the complete setup for my uh, environment. Now, what I will do is uh, first I will create a test key. 
uh, in, uh, on my machine and I will sign the test image with this test key. So I will call the test key Wabbit Networks IO. And uh, there is a, a convenience command for that. So if you want to actually test uh, how the signing works, you can use this convenience command. It will create not only the test key, but also will create uh, the certificate that you can use to validate the signed image. So if you lose the keys, you will see that actually there is a Wabbit Networks key. It can give you the, the keypad, the, uh, uh, the certificate pad, and the plugin name because the test key is associated with the core notation CLI. Uh, it doesn't use any plugins, uh, doesn't have a plugin name. And of course, if you list the certificates, you will see that there are also the certificates. So this is the command uh, that uh, um, I can use to do the signing. So as you can see, I will use the uh, test key uh, to sign my test image and I will use the COSI format for this signature. So it's as simple as that. You issue the command. Uh, as always, it gives you warning because I am trying to uh, sign the tag and as we already mentioned, the tag is mutable tag. and. Uh, uh, we, what we do actually, we sign the image with its uh, digest, not with the tag itself. But uh, uh, it will give you this warning to say, look, you should not be signing tags. You should be signing actually digest because that's the immutable part of the, the image. And of course, we have the uh, notation list command that uh, you can use to uh, list the signatures there. So if you do that, you will see that the image, which is the net monitor image with this particular digest, has a notary signature and it gives you the digest of the signature. Uh, the digests are linked, so if you, uh, for example, try to modify the signature, then that will be actually tampering with the signature itself and it will uh, uh, invalidate the signature for that particular image. So that is the first demo, and having in mind that the demo gods are not working, uh, I will uh, run the next one. Uh, sorry, again with uh, the video. So uh, the next one is uh, troubleshooting, actually, uh, notation. So uh, when uh, one of the things that actually we noticed when all the changes with OCI happens is it's really hard for kind of uh, users and all, also our developers to go and figure out what's happening because different registries, they provide different support for OCI. Uh, so we need to troubleshoot a lot and either you debug it directly as a developer. Uh, but sometimes people like me, PMs, we don't have all the gold environment set up and we needed to get some more information. So I implemented a very detailed uh, debugging capability. So if you run it with, uh, uh, for example, the signing uh, uh, command with debug tag or, or switch, you will get a very detailed actually output what is happening. So as you can see, we trace all the calls to the registry, what we are sending, what we are uh, receiving back. And of course, at the end of the day, I, I get an error from DHCR. Oops. Let me return a little bit. Okay, so I get an error and I can go and actually uh, figure out uh, eventually that error, uh, what that means. So I can tell you at the moment, because we investigated that error so many times, uh, some of the registries actually do not uh, support deletions. Uh, and uh, uh, as you can see, the error here is really that delete failed. The way that uh, GitHub container registry is actually uh, 1.0. Uh, compliant registry. So they do not support uh, yet the 1.1 referrers types, but there is a backwards compatibility with that. Uh, the only problem is that, as I mentioned, many of the registries do not support the delete. Uh, the way uh, OCI works is that actually for backward compatibilities, we use um, uh, manifest indexes. And every time when you add a new signature, uh, you actually create a new manifest index and uh, uh, the tool tries to delete the old one and that's where the, actually it's failing right now. Uh, that doesn't mean though that the, the new signature is not added and we'll just see that actually this, this call succeeded. So uh, we have another command for helping you kind of investigate issues with notation, uh, which is uh, inspect of the signatures. So I can run notation inspect, and this is my application image. And if I run it, I'll get a very detailed information about the uh, signature uh, itself. 
So you can see uh, it gives you not only the digest of the signature, but also gives you additional information like the algorithm that is signed, uh, when it is signed, uh, uh, when it expires. So if you had hit some, for example, errors like uh, uh, verification errors, you can actually go and inspect it with that. And uh, uh, again, just to show that uh, the second signing with, uh, uh, with um, uh, test key succeeded. So if I run expect, I can see that actually there. Two signatures here. So there is the first one, it's a little bit cut on the video, and the second one. Uh, the last uh, demo that I will show is also the uh, verification. So let's uh, go through the uh, verification demo. So the first thing that uh, I will do is I will uh, set up, uh, um, actually look at the trust or vocation. So we have the concept of trust ors and trust policies in notation. Uh, as you can see, I have only one uh, uh, trust store, which was for my test key. And uh, uh, if you, uh, what I'm gonna do now is I will add additional uh, certificate that I will trust for my application uh, image. So this additional certificate uh, comes out of Key Vault. As I mentioned, uh, we use Key Vault in this uh, particular case where we store the keys and the certificate. So I'll just pull the certificate down store it locally and add it to my, my trust store. It is happening. Okay, that is done. So if you list the, the uh, vocation, you'll see that's my uh, certificate file and I am just adding them to the, uh, adding this file to the trust store. So this is a publicly, public certificate, so there is nothing secret to it, so you can go and pull it down. And now if you list the uh, uh, trust store vocation, you'll see that I have two uh, trust uh, stores, uh, certificates that I trust. One is Wabit Networks, which is my test certificate, and the other one is the GHCR, which came out of uh, Key Vault. Now, if I try to verify the image, that will fail. Now, the reason it fails is because I have not defined any trust policy. I just pull the keys, but that doesn't mean that I trust this key for everything that I have in my registries. So what we need to do is really to define a trust policy that uh, will tell us what, do we, what keys do we trust for which registries. What that means is that you can actually provide different keys for different registries or different uh, images that uh, you wanna deploy or um, run on your workloads. In this case, I am just creating a trust policy for the, uh, my application image. I will not create a trust policy for uh, the, the test image. And the assumption is that I trust only the application uh, image and the key on my production workload. So if I do notation verify application image, it succeeds. If I do notation verify test image, that will not succeed. Once again, I sh come on, too fast. I guess you are able to see the error. <laughs> uh, anyway, so those are the, the two demos. Apologize that uh, we had to run them from the um, from the uh, videos. Uh, and uh, let's get back to the... <coughs> slides. On Apple. Okay. 
so the next thing that we'll talk about is the notary security. So notary, uh, we are actually, we started uh, first testing with notary uh, back in December. Uh, and we completed actually the first pass. Right now we have first tests that are con continuously running on all the sub projects in notary. Uh, there were two issues that were discovered. One of those issues actually was uh, filed as security advisory and we have CV. This issue was fixed in one of the RC versions. The second issue was just a dependency issue and we updated the dependency and everything is, is good. So uh, there is a, a first report that you can go and read. Uh, there is also a CNCF blog post uh, describing that. We would like to thank uh, 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 other uh, logics uh, for the first testing and all the great collaboration that we had with them. We are also in the process, as I mentioned, to uh, go through a security audit. So we are not required to do that as an incubating project, but uh, it was uh, something that actually we are really happy to do and we would like to do this on a regular basis, not uh, just once. Uh, the, um, Security audit started in March. Uh, we have the preliminary results from the security audit. Uh, there was nothing severe uh, discovered in notary as a security issue. Uh, there will be report that will be published. So um, the audit will is scheduled to complete by end of this month and the report will most probably show up in, in May. Uh, we are just waiting for this security audit to complete and to have the report published in order to uh, release the, the first version of um, uh, Notation CLI. Uh, on the community update, so over the last year we had uh, uh, 52 contributors uh, to the Notary project. Uh, 15 of those contributors were very active, so they had more than 10 PRs uh, in the project. Um, as we mentioned, so since uh, um, the last KubeCon, we had nine releases and uh, uh, we're just waiting for the security audit to get the first official release and supported release. Uh, we had, uh, and that's for notation, we had also, we have also libraries which uh, you can use in order to incorporate notar uh, notary signing into tools like, let's say, Kiverno. Uh, Kiverno is doing that right now so they can verify notary signatures. Uh, and uh, we had uh, uh, three revisions on the signing specification and of course a website update. Uh, what is next for notation? Uh, after 1.0, uh, we'll continue to add uh, uh, new capabilities like uh, timestamp authorities, we'll add uh, certificate revocation, uh, we'll add capabilities to uh, verify more than one signature. Uh, we are working on many usability improvements. Uh, that is one thing that actually we will uh, have significant uh, improvements there. And of course, more debugging and verbose options. Uh, there is all, one more demo that I will go through. So one thing that uh, we implemented is also uh, signing. Uh, so we have six minutes and we have a few more things. So what is the preference? Should I go through the demo or do you guys want to hear more what's coming from, from Notary? And I'll be happy to do yeah. a demo offline also. Shall we go through the slides and if we've got time yeah. we can do the we yeah. can okay. run demo. Yeah. Let's go through the slides. Uh, so, the, the one important thing uh, uh, for us in Notary is really the portability, right? One of the things that uh, we would like to make sure is that signatures that are created with Notary can be moved from registry to registry to registry. Uh, they can be verified, doesn't matter how many hops they had. And the most important part is you can use it in an air gap environment. So uh, in order to use it in an air gap environment, of course, you cannot rely on any uh, communication outside this air gap environment, like uh, public endpoints uh, for verification. Uh, so everything that uh, we create in notaries with that in mind, that uh, uh, customers are not actually uh, uh, freely open to go and communicate from their, uh, let's say, Kubernetes clusters randomly to some uh, internet endpoints. Just. Um, we're also um, 
um, looking at um, with the you know standards around um, identity um, and verifiable identities. Um, so um, you know um, one of the um, you know one of one of the one of the important things around you know supply chain actions is like who who did the action. Um, you know, can you verify who it is? Can you trust who, who the person is, um, you know, supposed to be rather than and dealing with typo squatting and things like that. Um, so um, we're also um, looking at working with the SKIT project, which is an IETF project, which is um, uh, basically builds a transparency log and um, and helps um, you know helps record um, record identities and um, and signatures. So um, that's a that's an ongoing IETF project where um, that you know there's a there's a lot of interest in um, as a you know as an externally you know external standard for supply chain security that we're working we're, we're working along with several people who are working along with to work out how, how, how we should incorporate and build that with Notary. Um, there's a lot of interest which has been kind of driving, you know, uptake of this around um, the additional metadata around um, supply chain. So um, SBOMs, SPDX, you know, and, and other documents also um, in Toto attestations and, and sort of more fine-grained information about where things were built and, and um, and so on, that like the you know what the testifiers that are doing, um, and um, so um, we're really looking at you know how we can add you know all this kind of information to software in you know in the container ecosystem, how we can help people um, build you know all those things together and tools, so um, you can you know do have more fine grained controls about you know specific. You know, there's a specific issues with specific releases because you can trust the S bomb, um, work out what's in, what's in it, work out whether you trust that particular release because the dependence you trust the dependencies or not, and so on. So, this whole flow of information and the decisions, you know, based on you know kind of real time updated information that you have about what's going on is really important. So, um, that's another area again where there's um, you know I think we need we need more. More standards. We're looking at, um, you know, we, we've done some prototyping around um, Intoto attestations with um, from Docker Build, um, but we're looking at again putting that through the standards process. Now we've started prototyping it. We've also um, um, start, just just started. We just we we were doing some internal prototyping work, but we've decided to go forward with um, a project for. Um, storing tough directly in the registry at, um, at Docker, so that we're going to propose this as a, a, a again as a new sub project of Notary. Um, so this is to directly store tough repository metadata directly in registry. One of the initial issues we had with Notary v1 was it stored in a separate database, um, and, um, and and you know part of the original kind of plan was like how do we migrate everything out of you know these sort of sidecars that are not part of ACI and are separate, and put them internally. Um, Tuff provides lots of um, uh, advantages that we kind of don't, um, you know, don't have without that, like ability to distribute and rotate um, keys and um, delegate different people for different targets um, and sign the individual tags. So you know, we, this is all part of the fact that we see Notary project as a home for a kind of a set of standards around supply chain security that you can um, you know put together um, and and build you know build all the different things that people are asking for in this space. Yep, and uh, we are right on time. Actually, those are a couple of other sessions that uh, unfortunately they are already passed, but you can go and re uh, watch the recordings. So. Uh, we had a, a vulnerability uh, management uh, session where we demonstrated uh, uh, together with Trivi how you can manage vulnerabilities, sign them, uh, verify them, and also use Kiverno to when actually deploy um, um, some workouts on, on Kubernetes. You can verify that, let's say, the SBOM or the image is signed, that the vulnerability doesn't have uh, high severity vulnerabilities. 
Uh, of course, Kiverno has a session that uh, they also talk about uh, notary there. And there was another session with uh, uh, Ratify and uh, Gatekeeper kind of uh, using the same, the same approach. Uh, we don't have time for the, for the last demo. It's, uh, the last demo is actually how you can sign local artifacts. Uh, so you don't need to have the, the, the image or the SBOM in the registry before signing it, which is important uh, for uh, certain scenarios. So if somebody is interested, I'll be happy to run it uh, uh, like after the session or uh, you will find it linked from the uh, slides and you can watch it yourself. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.